I will now invite our honorable member of parliament, who is also our chair of the national chair for the Patriot Front, MP for Karolushi, uh, Honorable Kampamba Mlenga, who also represents it as at the Sadiq Parliamentary Forum, to take the floor and make a comment. Uh, thank you, Whip, and uh, uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, I would first and foremost directly want to speak to our women in the midst of our democratic conference. I think it's time for us as mothers to stand up and defend our own children. This is our country. There is nothing new about Mrs. Harris coming. I'm sure, especially colleagues from the media, we have seen her stance in Ghana. And I'm sure this is a stance here in Zambia. In, in the midst of this democratic conference, I think America should echo the right to choice. Each country should be able to choose and have a clear agenda on how they intend to govern their country. Aid should never, at any particular time, good aid should never be tied to any agenda. We know what this LGBTQ is about. They might not use terms like gay, but they'll use uh, uh, certain words that may be a words. common, yes, a common man might not understand. But we know for a fact that their driven agenda is obviously to promote these rights. God designed man and woman in the Garden of Eden for an intention, a clear intention that we as a Christian nation know we will not allow a situation where we will be guided that man should be man, woman should be woman, and they should marry or whatever uh, term you might use it. It is our generation, our identity that they are going to destroy. All of us, regardless of any political affiliation, it's time that Zambia stood up. This is a country that was declared a Christian nation. And all of us have a right as Zambians to defend who we are. We have to have an identity. And I'm calling out to especially the mothers, because we are the ones that go to those labor wards. We are the ones that nature those children. And sad of it all, the target is on our own children. And if we do not see it, it is just last week I was visiting one of my children's uh, 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 sons in, in, in Kito Central Hospital. He is in a terrible state. The boy is confused. And if we do not stand up and, and, and protest to this occasion, believe you me, this is a generation lost and all of us in our homes. It will be very sad. It is no, God is not a God of mistake. He created man and woman for a purpose in the Garden of Eden. He did not create man and man. So in as much as the stance, and you see, even as much as government will come out and say, we do not support LGBTQ. <laughs> Speaking is one issue. Actions speak louder than words. So if the agenda is to promote this LGBTQ, government should not even have allowed the summit to take place as a number one identity to say, look, we acknowledge and we are saying this is a Christian nation and on a Christian ground, talks like that should never, ever, ever be allowed. So for me, I speak as a mother and I'm calling out all mothers out there, let Mrs. Harris come and speak on a proper agenda. But the stance of LGBT is not welcome. It is not welcome from any well-meaning Zambian, any Christian. And it is time that the church began to speak. We want to hear the church speak on what is happening in this country. We want to hear the church echo more on their stance on LGBTQ. We are not just going to speak. We need people to action that this is not correct and it shall not be allowed in this country. Very well, very well. That was a sentiment from a mother supplementing the elder. God is not God of mistakes. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, you are ready for yourselves. And thank you so much, Honorable uh, um, Member, for that passion and passionate plea. At this point in time, I will now invite one of our senior members of Parliament, not only senior member of the Parliament, but is one of our leaders in the party front. He is the honorable member of parliament for Kawangwa, but most importantly, he is our deputy secretary general of the party. 
Deputy Secretary General of the Party, functioning properly, both running the constituency and also running the affairs of the party at the front. So we are uh, uh, um, being shepherded by uh, him and the vice president of the party. Honorable Nixon Chilangwa, our Deputy Secretary General, you speak to the issues of why maybe supplementing the message from the vice president on our position with regards to the ongoing summit just next door and uh, 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 a few other issues related to the same and maybe also to supplement what Honorable Mutatalo has already spoken to in terms of uh, institutions of governance that should be anchors of democracy. Honorable Nixon Chilangwa, you've got the floor. Thank you, Honorable Kampiongo. All protocols observed. Colleagues, thank you for coming and for giving us this opportunity to interact. I saw from the pictures in Ghana that Kamala Harris is moving around with her husband. <laughs> yes, she's moving around with her husband. What a, how ironic is it that somebody moving around with a husband, a male, is busy promoting all these obnoxious traits. Isn't it ironical? She has got a man by her side and she's asking our children otherwise. What kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> Kamala Harris must be told in her face that this is a noble area in Zambia. Let her produce a female as her husband. Then we can talk to her and can listen to her. <laughs> Secondly, what happened in Parliament yesterday, we as patriotic front members of Parliament are not party to the appointment of those judges. Because our right to debate and to interrogate that particular issue was curtailed by the Speaker. She gave us no opportunity to debate. We are in Parliament to represent the views of our people. Yet, lo and behold, the Right Honorable Nelly Muti elected to deny us that important task for which we were elected for. That is totally unacceptable. So we decided to vote against. And you watch the space. You will know the reason very soon. You will know other things coming soon. Why we elected not to be party to that way of doing things. Colleagues, Zambia is a democratic, is a constitutional democracy that we honor. How can you hold a democratic summit in a country where people are no longer voting for their representatives in the manner that it should be? Have you all forgotten what happened in Kabushi? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten what happened in Kwacha? Have you all forgotten? Some of you were even part of the entire that went to Eastern Province. In Kaumbo, in Usangazi. Have we forgotten? Have we forgotten what happened in Mukusha where people were beaten, brutalized, including the candidate? Have we forgotten what, forgotten what happened in Mwense? And then this character is able to say, I'm hosting the, 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 the Democratic Conference. Come on. And how do Look at the countries that are said to be co-hosting the so-called Democratic Conference. Who are they? Costa Rica, South Korea, the Netherlands, the United States of America. Are you sure this, uh, this is an agenda about democracy? There's more than what meets the eye. Colleagues, were well, you not shocked when some overgrown idiot <laughs> yes, that's what I call people who make reckless statements. Unless one idiot, this is a functional constitutional democracy. You cannot go around the world, go around the globe, everywhere where there is democracy, people have the right to pick it. People have the right to demonstrate. People have the right to come out in numbers and say, we are not interested in what you are doing. What happens when you go out there? 
and issue threats against citizens that they cannot demonstrate, they cannot come out and do what they want. And for your own information, all the issues that we are talking about as Patriotic Front, we've written letters. We've written letters to all the mother church bodies in this country to highlight some of the dangers of this conference. We've written a letter to the police that us, as Patriotic Front, we want to demonstrate and give us the space to demonstrate. Do you think they will respond? I doubt. If they don't respond, we are going to take things the way we like to take. So that's where we are. But Jack Mwimbu must watch himself. Jack Mwimbu does not own Zambia. Jack Mwimbu is representing UPND, which has lost popularity. Jack Mwimbu is representing the UPND, which has lost favor with the Zambians. If they think they still have the 2.8 million Zambians, I'm challenging President Haka in the Ichilema that is hosting a democracy conference, that tomorrow as they go to the conference venue with Kamala Harris, he must, he must go for any elections. He's a Democrat. If he is a real Democrat, I'm asking President Haka in the Ichilema to call for fresh elections immediately so that we see his democratic credentials. It doesn't matter what happened in, on August 12th. That is water under the bridge. The Zambians cannot wait to, to get rid of the UPND because they are undemocratic, they are, standing, they are sitting on our rights, they are so provocative and reasonable and behave like children without tea, like headless chickens. How can you say we cannot demonstrate? How can we demonstrate? How can you demonstrate? The other day we saw one of your colleagues, a journalist, being locked up for doing their job. Which democracy does that? That's where we saw how many journalists were harassed by the UPND policemen for doing your job. Is that what democracy does? Is that what a democratic country is? And what is Zambia's ranking anyway? Among the most democratic countries in Africa. Are we in the top five? The answer is no. Why wasn't this conference held in Mauritius, which is ranked as the more best and the best democratic country in Africa? What are we doing here? Why wasn't it even held in South Africa, which is in the top five bracket? Go and Google. Zambia, we are not. And we're actually in reverse. All the democratic credentials that people have fought for, which have been in place for such a long time, come UPND, boom, reverse. No wonder I love that song. Do no na, do no na, yeah. You don't know that song? Do no na, reverse. Is being fulfilled today. <laughs> By voting for UPND, Zambia is in the lunar reverse of the West order. Colleagues, those of you talk to Jack Mwimbu, tell him that Zambia does not belong to him and the Zambians are free. That's how we sing the national anthem. Stand and sing of Zambia proud and free. That's what we are. We are Zambians and we are proud because we are free. Because Kenneth Kaunda and his colleagues fought for our independence. And we shall not allow President Taka in the Ichilema or Jack Mungu to take that away from us. So you tell him. So colleagues, this democratic conference being held in Lusaka is a sham. <coughs> As the members of parliament, people who came to parliament through, 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 through the ballot, how many have been invited in their capacities as members of parliament? How many? As far as, as, far as I know, from the PF, it's zero. None. Political parties, some guy from justice asked the Zambia Center for Interparty Dialogue to say, can you ask members of, members of political parties to come to our meeting? They know us. They know PF. The vice president should have invited us. And why is it that there is no statement whatsoever about this conference? There has been no single statement on the floor of the house. 
It's shrouded in unbelievable secrecy. In the world of shame. Eh? How do you have such a conference shrouded in so much secrecy? Maybe members of the press were called to Ministry of, uh, of Foreign Affairs or to Cabinet Office and given a statement. Have you been invited? Has such been done? Tamushi. I'm sure you would have reported about it. So a summit of this nature, where normal people organize such summits, information should not be hidden under the table. We don't have to be sniffing around to what is happening. Even up to today, 90% of Zambians, 95% of Zambians don't even know when Kamala Harris is arriving. No, she was going to arrive yesterday. No, she arrived in the night. No, she arrived the other day. What is she coming? No, she's coming for the conference. Listen to what she's saying, what she said in Ghana, and it will tell you exactly what she's here for. Did you see the speaker for Ghana? What he said about their president? Yes, the speaker for Ghana told of their president for being a coward. So here, Kamala Harris must know that LGBTQ is in a go area. If they want to have a picnic at Murungushi, let them have a picnic. <laughs> but I can tell you what is happening at Murungushi is not a democratic conference whatsoever. Because people who have gone through democracy, who have been elected, like those of us sitting here today, are not party to that conference. So what are they going to be talking about? Who are they going to be talking to? Isn't it ironic? And our strategy, as patriotic front is going to continue. We won't tell you, but just watch the space. What will happen in the next 48 hours? Mm. Just watch the space, and Jack Mwimbu will not stand in our way. I thank you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. In case you didn't know, Amen. when all of us were setting the temple, I told you that is an ordained senior uh, <laughs> member, of the, member seventh. of the Seventh Day Adventist. The Honorable Deputy uh, Secretary General is an ordained. The only time he wears red is when <laughs> he's in the uniform of uh, Christianity in the United Church of Zambia. He's also an ordained uh, senior. Proud of you, is it? <laughs> At this juncture, um, earlier on, Honorable Chitotla did set the temple of uh, the discourse. It's now time to wrap it up, and in wrapping up uh, this engagement, um, I will invite the leader of opposition who um, will sum it up and uh, probably uh, also touch on the remaining part of the element because this uh, sham has now described. Oh, we had um, we have to balance. You know, we are we are we are. We are we are good youths as well. Who oh, we haven't seen in that summit. <laughs> so we have to be inclusive. We have to be inclusive. Uh, we have. Uh, I will invite the youth before I invite. Um, actually, he should have come before the the, the the SG, but he was running up to do one or two things. So um, I will invite the, our youth for member of parliament from Speaker Central to make also some brief comments um, and then uh, we can wrap it up. Honorable MP from Speaker Central, uh, Mr. Francis Kapiamba. Uh, thank you so much, Whip. And uh, let me begin by stating that uh, even God is very upset with the UPND. That's why we are seeing him exposing their scandals every day. And I'm sure one of the reasons why God is upset is their intention to impose LGBTQ rights on the Zambian people, which they do not want. America by nature is a homonger. When they talk about promotion of democracy, it's a lie. On the other hand, they are holding a machete to, to cut. We have seen how they have destroyed Libya in the name of promotion of democracy. So is how they did it to Iraq. They spent billions of dollars destroying Iraq. They did so even in Afghanistan. So many countries that they have destroyed. When you read 
on the uh, U.S. strategy for Sub-Saharan Africa, more special on page uh, uh, 7, you find that the so-called promotion of democracy in Africa is all about aimed at meddling in our internal affairs, which they shouldn't do and which we shouldn't allow them to do. If they want to support us with aid, let it come without any conditions. And if the UPND government wants uh, America to support them with aid, let them not accept any conditionalities that the, the American government want to put across, more especially the promotion of democracy, which is meant at meddling into our own affairs, our electoral systems and everything. America should just support us with aid if they want, without any conditions. If they give us conditions such as LGBTQ, we say no to their aid. If they give us conditions such as a promotion of democracy, in, uh, in the actual sense they are meddling in, in our internal affairs, we say no to that. So, we have a clear position on this matter, even their so-called democracy summit, which by any design should have included all of us, including the Zambian people out there. That conference tomorrow will be filled up to capacity. 75% of the people there are UPND cadres. What a democracy is like. We have requested this government to allow us to protest against the high cost of living on the Copper Belt. They have refused. They have not responded to us. What kind of democracy is that? We have requested this government to protest against this uh, sham of a summit. They have refused. What kind of democracy is that? So as the, we expect the Vice President of the U.S. to come here, we want her and the conference to confine themselves on issues to do with poverty alleviation. That is what our people want to hear. They are not interested in, uh, in, in, in a democracy, hypocritical kind of democracy. They are not interested. Our people are interested in poverty alleviation. They want uh, the high cost of living to come down. That's what they want to hear. So if they do not confine themselves to such kind of topics, tomorrow they will see us protesting. We are very ready to be picked up by Honorable Jackie Mwimbo and his colleagues. We are very ready. That's why you are seeing me dressing like this. We have a region of our youths out there. And uh, we know, we are aware. They had a meeting the day before yesterday, and they asked a, pro a strategy on how they are going to, uh, to fight our protest. We are not going to allow that. They will meet us head on. We have mobilized enough people to come and protest with. So let them not take this uh, lightly. We are very ready for them as youths and as members of parliament. We want to send a message to them that we are, we are not going to allow it. And by the, by the way, why should America choose who our friends should be? They want to, uh, to, 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 to attack Russia. They want to, uh, to, to displace China out of Africa. What is that? Who has, who has appointed them to be superiors of us? We are a, a nation on our own. We are a continent on our own. We have never asked for an inch of America, not even Europe. But why should they ask for um, Africa as a whole? I end here, Honorable. Thank you so much. I'm sure you're able to see the energetic way. <laughs> so I'm sure you are, you are, you are great for yourself. Um, and uh, uh, at this time, um, as I invite uh, the, 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 the colleague uh, leader of opposition uh, to sum it up. There are issues, I'm told there's an agenda on corruption, uh, which is here, but uh, we don't know what format the, 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 the agenda of corruption takes. Uh, I, I think our honorable colleagues have spoken so much to these issues of uh, human rights, and the minority human rights as it is referred to. So as uh, yeah, you sum up, uh, it, uh, it's important to reflect on such issues. I invite you now to uh, conclude this discourse. Honorable Andre. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Whip. I will start by recognizing the members of uh, the Central Committee, led by our Deputy SG, uh, colleagues that have spoken uh, before me. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your discourse. Uh, Elder uh, Ronald Kaumachitotela, uh, we have uh, uh, Honorable Mutaya Chalo, uh, Honorable uh, Nixon Chilangwa, uh, our dear lady Mulenga uh, Kampamba, uh, of course uh, Honorable Robert Kapianga, 
Uh, we've got uh, Mufulia Member of Parliament who is uh, giving us uh, support, Bamuila, uh, and of course uh, Honorable Pavuma, who happens to be our Minister of Mines in our Shadow Cabinet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, to the media, you always say it's a good uh, afternoon indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, um, as your representatives, we have raised concerns regarding what is happening in our country. Colleagues that spoke earlier have mentioned to this uh, uh, media interaction that what has raised most of our concerns has been the silence uh, from government on these two very important events that are happening. One of them being the visit of the number two, the Vice President of the US, uh, Madame Kamala Harris. Number two, the holding of this uh, particular conference. There's been total silence from government, at least not on the floor of the House. Can you imagine, colleagues, that we're just a few meters away from Mungushi Conference Center, where this conference is taking place, one of my MPs came to tell me that uh, for any updates, he's talking to his friend in Costa Rica. He's the one who's giving him updates about what's happening here. <laughs> and if he fails, he's also phoning his friend in Korea and Netherlands. Because we have no information. The information is out there, but not here. Indeed, we're just a few meters away. Now, we must be very categorical. I want to start by talking about our constitutional democracy. Zambia is a constitutional democracy. And in a constitutional democracy, uh, democracy is measured by fidelity to the Constitution. To what extent do we, as a country, follow our own Constitution? We are surprised that we were chosen as the best destination or the best host for this particular event, even in the face of Kawushi and Kwacha. We are of a firm view, as you member of Parliament, that Zambia at the moment does not possess the credentials to host such a conference. A democracy conference in the face of Kwacha and Kawushi. Look at the diminishing space, diminishing media space in this particular uh, political uh, arena. Your friends, uh, Movie TV, the other time, and many others are being arrested every day for doing their work. And yet we know that uh, for any democracy to thrive, the media plays a key role. So we are of the firm view that um, at the moment, we do not, as a country, possess the credentials uh, that it takes to be able to host such an event. Colleagues, you also know that uh, if America indeed is coming to uh, you know, uh, lectures uh, on democracy, we need to look at their own credentials on the issue of democracy outside America. Honorable Robert Kapianga gave several examples. Uh, such similar efforts were made in Syria, they were made in uh, Libya, they were made in Iraq, and so on. So the examples are many. We therefore wonder uh, what uh, exactly this uh, democracy conference or summit is all about. And remember, even in the Bible it says, the two cannot work together unless they agree. When you look at the executive orders that Comrade uh, Kapianga referred to, America recently signed executive orders. Among them, is an executive order where foreign aid will be tied to the promotion and support of LGBTQ rights. They're very clear about it. Number two, the other uh, executive order is spoke to the countering and maligning of Russia's influence in Africa, including China. So our friends, our visitors who are coming, have come out very clearly over their foreign policy. So the question that we have is that President Haka in the Hichilema has in the recent past, past stated that uh, he does not support, his government do not support LGBTQ rights. He equally has stated that uh, the geopolitical relations between Zambia, Russia and China will continue. So we have a classic case where two hosts are clearly divided when it comes to a foreign policy. What we demand to know is that uh, when or during the conference, whether today, tomorrow, or the other day, if the issue of LGBTQ arises, what position will the president take? We saw an embarrassing situation in Ghana 
Are we going to be faced with a similar situation? Where the Ghanaian president was uh, jumping and diving, kicking corners, and not giving a straight answer. Is that the position our president is going to take when that uh, issue comes up? What position would he take on the geopolitical relations? These are the simple questions that we are asking. But what response are we getting from the executive? Is Comrade Jack Wimbu taking it upon himself to issue threats? I'll repeat what the Secretary General said. We, as members of parliament from the left, from the peers, we will not join a list of puppets who are going to sit back in fear and submit to imperialists. I want to state that. We are not going to join that list of puppets. We will remain steadfast and defend the interest of Zambians. The Zambian people put us in that parliament to defend the interests and aspirations of this country. So when we look at our constitution, we are very clear in our minds that some of these cultures that they are bringing are unconstitutional. We swore to defend the constitution and will stand to defend that constitution. So clearly, Comrade uh, Jack Wimbu, I want to say this as a warning to you. Minister, rethink your position. Do not think weaponizing the police and other security agencies is the way to go in a democracy. There comes a time, my dear brother, when there is no amount of armor, there is no amount of gunfire that will restrain the people that would like to exercise their democratic rights. If you want to govern this country, govern it using the principles enshrined in the Constitution. We have a Constitution, we have a Bill of Rights that gives the rights, fundamental rights to Zambians to demonstrate, to picket. We see that every day in advanced democracies, advanced jurisdictions. When there's a conference such as this one, there would have been people all over picketing, expressing themselves by appearing to have a very successful conference with no one picketing does not measure the success that uh, you'd want to show to our visitors. But we want to send this uh, message to the Home Affairs Minister that uh, whether it's now or in future, please uh, warn yourself and resist the temptation of using threats or weaponizing the police with a belief, a mistaken belief, that we, the people of Zambia, or indeed we, the lawmakers, will be who will stay away in fear. We have said no to those threats, Comrade Jack Mwimbo. Find a better way of communicating or negotiating with the people, advising the citizens. Threats is not the way to go. We will not succumb to those threats. We will stand firm. Uh, we are ready to pay the price. For the sake of democracy and for the sake of defending our constitution, we are even ready to lay our lives in defense of our constitution. So that is a message that we want to give to Comrade uh, Jack Mwimbu so that he realizes the price that we are ready to pay in defense of our constitution. The, that, the, the, the price that we are ready to pay in defense of our culture. We are a Christian nation and Zambia remains blessed because of that pronouncement. We will not allow any other culture that will be brought upon our land to bring a case upon this beautiful and blessed land. To our visitors, please take this as a message for you. We have seen what you, what you did in Ghana. That gave us a clear indication of what your agenda is like. Even before that, we had no doubt, because we had recourse. We had read, we had gone through executive orders. We know what your foreign policy is all about. But uh, uh, your, your meeting in Ghana uh, gave a clear indication of what your agenda is like. So as you come here, we want to uh, urge you, please talk about democracy, talk about poverty reduction, and the aid that you're able to give to Zambia without tying any conditions. Because Zambians stand ready, the churches are ready. We are speaking for the churches. We are speaking for the clergy. We are speaking for the youths right across the country. We are not speaking in our individual capacities, but in our representative capacities. So therefore, take a message from this media interaction very seriously, because it represents voices of Zambians right across the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to uh, add my voice on a matter that was raised by Honorable um, Chalo regarding the debate uh, on the ratification of judges that happened yesterday. It was most unfortunate because most of you uh, came out in numbers. You made submissions through us as your representatives. You had certain apprehensions 
you know, he had certain fears about some of the nominees that were, 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 were brought for ratification. Unfortunately, we were never given a chance to be able to air or submit, make those submissions that you made through us. We want to appeal to the Zambian people that for any democracy to, uh, to thrive, the judiciary forms an integral part. And therefore, the selection of judges is a very, very important process because you, you, that process should be able to come up with names of nominees of impeccable repute to be able to represent us as judges. Uh, remember that um, the Constitution provides for the appointment of judges. And if you look at the constitutional text and you look at the constitutional order, you come to the realization that yes, whilst the constitutional text may have its own limitations, the constitutional order, which includes principles and values, outlines the qualities and the values that must be possessed by those that are going to sit in that high place uh, called a court. And if at all there are some doubts that are created, there are some doubts that are created regarding those nominees, it's very important that, first of all, Parliament takes those apprehensions or uh, submissions very seriously because these people are expected to uh, function or character functions in an impartial manner. So we are worried that some of those nominees that were ratified yesterday did not even qualify, clearly even going by the strict constitutional text. And yet, uh, uh, you know, the names were put forth and, and ratified. We fear what is going to happen to our future uh, outcomes of those courts, given the compromise that may have been given in this particular process. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, with those few words, I would like to thank <coughs> all of you, especially members of parliament, members of central committee that came out to speak to you today. Uh, remember that uh, we have put certain questions forth, and uh, because of uh, what Jack Mwembo and his friends would like to do, uh, we are also very uh, uh, careful as to what information we are giving out, but uh, you will be advised in due course as to what will, what will be next. Thank you very much. There you have it. I think. Uh